On this special edition of Low Buck Garage, I fixed the carburetor wrong. I install a starter wrong. I operate a dump truck wrong. Sometimes dump trucks aren't as easy to operate as they seem. And then this happens. Some of you may recognize the vehicles behind me because those were ones I did videos on getting them running last year. Since last year, they've been piled with construction debris, so now i got to get them running again and go dump the stuff. This is going to be easy, or should be. I'm going to fire these up, go dump them out back, and then rearrange a few things. Let's start with this one, because I think it has a battery in it. I'm going to pop the hood here, and in the comments of my last video, People mentioned that this truck, the hood should be able to go all the way open. Never actually tried it, so we're going to try it right now. Oh, there is a battery, so that's good. Can we lift this all the way? Ooh. That's pretty darn close to vertical. I like that. Now that is a handy feature. So now I'm going to hook up the battery, and we're going to assume this thing will start right up and drive. I always assume the best until proven wrong. Oh yeah, driver's side door doesn't work. Forgot about that. We got antifreeze, that's good. Oil's low, but it's there. Right after the last video when I had that truck all warmed up, I did change the oil. I bought the cheapest diesel oil I could find at uh, Walmart. It's like 13 bucks a gallon. And it's most of the way up, so that should be fine. Let's see if we have any battery juice. <laughs> All right, the battery's pretty much dead. So, let's move to the next truck. Last year I stole batteries out of the excavator for this, and I had to put them back. And the other day I was in Napa buying parts for a different project, and I found clearance batteries for 89 bucks. Group 31s, too. So, this is what's going in. First thing, I gotta clear, clear out the debris. Apparently things have been living in here since I last used this truck. Just a few acorns though, not too bad. There we go, much better. This wire has the red heater hose around it, so that means these have got to be positive, and the black heater hose is around these, so they must be negative. Got them all hooked up, so I think we're ready to go here. I am going to go the extra mile and check the fluids though. I've got to show you this one again, because I've said it wrong before. On this gauge, there is a thermometer in there with uh, numbers on it, so I assumed it was a temperature gauge, because it says temperature and measures temperature. Uh, you can barely see it. Let me try to zoom in real good. But it says T-E-M-P right there. That's the hydraulic fluid right there. I finally have enough to read on this gauge. The fluid for the tank actually goes inside this gauge. Not only do you see the level on the outside, you also can tell what temperature it is to see if your fluid is getting hot. One of the cooler radiator caps I've ever seen. I don't see anything in there. It's wet, but not a whole lot of fluid. Might need to do something about that one. All right. Good old 6BT in here. Where was that dipstick? I know it had one. I remember this one. This one I know leaks. And this is our power steering here, and it is not fun to steer without this. Let's see, oh, I see a little red on the bottom of the stick, so we're going to assume everything's fine. Here we go. It's above the normal full, but it's right on the mark that someone filed into the dipstick, so I think it's where it's supposed to be. We're going to call this good. Let's see if anything scurries out of this. No. Oh. So far, nothing's attacking me. Just a few spiders, no big deal. I just noticed this climbing in. It actually has a date. This was 531-1969. Let's see how turnkey this thing really is. Neutral. Yep, definitely neutral. Buzzers. Button.
My airline broke again. This happened a lot before. In the meantime, I'll find some coolant and top up that radiator. The usual airline replacement method of snip it shorter and reattach. Fixed again. All right, let's get some work done now. Dumping. Apparently I was supposed to release this chain. Or something. I don't actually know how to use this thing. Let me put it down and try again. I did details in this dump bed in my last video on this truck. If you haven't seen it, it's kind of neat. Alright, now how does this thing work? I don't know how to use it, but it's neat. Now I think I have the tailgate in a better position. Let's try again. There we go. Pull forward and let it all slide out, hopefully. That didn't work at all. Sometimes dump trucks aren't as easy to operate as they seem. Nope, still don't have it yet. I'm gonna try the pulling forward technique again. Better. figure out how to use this tailgate properly. Trying to get all the handles does that. Alright, I'm gonna call that dumped and good enough and move on to the next thing. Gotta figure out how to get this tailgate back together. Let me show you the problem I'm having with this tailgate. Now, there's two pivots, one on top and one on bottom, which is fairly normal for dump trucks. You can have the dump bed swing up this way so that you can have sand and gravel go out easy, 
or you can have it drop down that way for the bulkier waste like what I was trying to dump. Now the problem I'm having is the bottom latch it seems to be hooked up to automatically release no matter what. Now as you crank this up, you're going along. Now there's some slack in that link, but you get to a certain point in the dumping process and that automatically releases the tailgate. So no matter what, that bottom pivot is going. Now I assume there used to be some kind of disconnect for this and somehow the springs and maybe this piece of chain or something, there was other pieces here that let you disconnect it so that didn't automatically release. But right now this does. Now the release for the top looks like it used to be these sliding pins that went in there. And at some point this whole top edge, due to rust and, well, rust, got all mangled and twisted. So that doesn't actually close properly anyway. This side is completely missing. So I can't really use this tailgate like it's supposed to be used. So I release this chain. And because the bottom releases automatically, I end up with this swingy floppy mess that just gets in the way of everything. Somehow this should be able to lock in that position. And it doesn't. So if any of you guys know what's actually supposed to be here in order to make this not release that bottom pin, uh, let me know. I'd like to revise this, but I don't know what I'm supposed to revise it to. I tried to start this truck and it barely cranked over. And I assume the battery was pretty dead. But I put a little bit of a charge in the battery, threw it in that dozer, and it's been starting that dozer consistently every time like nothing. I'm getting probably close to 10 starts on that, never charging the battery in between, the battery's still going fine. Now this thing did crank pretty slow before. I always assumed it was weak batteries or bad connections. But I'm starting to think about the starter. And this has that Chrysler starter. You've heard them before, they whine. It's that standard style one. I wanna try an experiment. I've been meaning to do this someday. Today's the day. I bought a starter, but not one for this truck. I bought a starter for a 94 Dakota. And those have a little bitty starter on them, but they start great. And the bolt pattern looks real similar. I'm gonna see if you can bolt one of these little 90s mini starters directly in place of one of the 70s windy starters. This truck is nice and easy to work on. Everything is just right here. There's only two bolts to hold this in. Did I get the right two bolts? I bet you guys were laughing at me on that one. I was taking out the wrong bolt. From down here, it looked like the right one. Got the right one this time. That's a little better. I'm just gonna connect this engine bolt back to the transmission and pretend that never happened. You didn't see anything. Now, a while back, I was working on one of my small block Mopar Jeeps, and uh, I was noticing that starter looked a lot like the mounting flange on this one. I have a pretty good feeling about this. I think this is gonna go right in. Something's not quite right there. Is that this guides it in place and holds it in the bell housing. There's a little bit of rust in my old one. Let me get that out of there. Make sure to use the correct rust removal tool. Yeah. Felt a few things flake off. Yeah, that feels a little better. The wires are in a slightly different spot, but they're the right terminal and they're close enough. That works perfect. So far this is a straight bolt in. There we go. It's all in. Let's see if it works. Found the smallest battery I could that was lying around the yard, and this hasn't been charged since last year. So we'll see if that starter works with this. Now that's a big improvement. 
Probably should get some fuel in it though. I don't think the choke works. So now we know those modern Chrysler starters are straight bolt in for the old style starter. And they work better. While I was buying the starter, I popped the eight bucks for a new choke cable. We're getting fancy here. But then I might be able to actually use the choke and it might make it easier to start rather than pouring gas in every time. Now with the old cable. It's really annoying not having this door open. I can see the linkages and it looks like they're moving. So I'm wondering if just with the slight body adjustments that have happened over the years, maybe it's just sagging down really bad. So we'll try the gentle persuasion method. Oh, hey, we got a working door. Perfect. Problem solved. I always remember to take the nut off before you feed the cable through. Now the nut goes back on. There we go. Perfect. Now in with the new. A little sticky. Might have to lube that up a little. We call it good enough for now. Let's see if this thing starts. Cranking good. Let's figure out why it's not running. Apparently I'm disturbing the hornets who are trying to live here. Apparently we just gotta get fuel to the carburetor. Last year I had some of the tank, so I assume it's still there. I took the little bale that holds the stud for the air cleaner off the carburetor so I could get a better shot at the fuel vent. And hopefully I got enough in there to run for a little bit. Let's see what we got. I added a little splash of gas in the carburetor to get it to run so the fuel pump could pump the fuel up. I did that a couple times. over and over again. It didn't really work. However, the starter worked great. Now I also threw a few gallons of gas in the tank because even though it had gas when I left it last year, doesn't mean it has gas now. I figured that wouldn't hurt. Seems like the fuel is not getting to the carburetor. I've had it running long enough, it should have. Might have had a fuel pump that went bad in the past year. That is a possibility. So, I'm gonna explore that option. I took the line off there on the carb. I'm gonna crank it over real fast. Tell me if stuff's coming out of that. See if this fuel pump is doing anything. You're right, the problem is not the fuel pump. And luckily that didn't start a fire. I'm gonna pop this one off and just see what I got in there. Cause I think we have some kind of clog or a stuck float at this point. Luckily, you can get to the float pin real easy on these. All right. Let's pop this thing back together. Now it's a little bit cleaner. Hopefully that helps. Well, that's sounding better. I think I angered that hornet though. Let me button this thing back up again. We're 
Back in business. Let's go take care of this load. It's amazing how much better a tailgate works when you can open it correctly. Now don't worry, my sister gonna sort through this to see what could be firewood, what's kindling, and then get the rest disposed of. It's not staying here, it's all gonna get sorted and moved somewhere else. Get these tires out of the way. Got a pile for those. I was having so much fun, I decided to go back for another load. That's it for this episode. I got both trucks running, both trucks got their load dumped, and they're both ready to do some work. So, I'm gonna go do some work with them. I had a lot of fun getting them running. Hope you guys are having fun too, and we'll see you next time.